Too many hands, here we go. Hi, my name is Lewis Thomas. I'm really excited to be here and opening up the Lightning Talks. I was here Saturday at dawn, walking around the conference room waiting for things to start, and I felt like a kid waiting for Disneyland to open. So this is really exciting. So I'm going to talk to you today about awesome macros that do nothing. I might be overselling this, but we'll see. So reading an API. Now, we do this all the time. So here's an example. We've got a function with a bunch of parameters. Uh, what can we learn from just looking at this? Well, we see the type of the parameters. That tells us what that parameter is. The compiler will enforce that for us. We see the name. That tells us what it's for. That's rather important. Unfortunately, it's not enforceable. Uh, there's const. That's helpful. It makes sure that the Kali doesn't modify the parameter. That's enforceable. Is there anything else we need to know before we call this? Well, we have this interesting little function that seems to be building a widget but it's uh, returning a Boolean, so um, where's the result? We've got like five pointers here, which one's important? It would be really helpful if we could label which parameters are in parameters and which parameters are out parameters. We can use a pound define, where we just pound define a word to be nothing, and then we can put those in front of the parameters and it doesn't bother the compiler at all. But we get to see whether it's an in or out parameter, it's really helpful, it's not enforceable, um, but it's better than nothing. And out's a little bit vague, but again, it's better than nothing. So now this is old hat, but if it's new to you, you're welcome. And now, is there anything else we want to know? Uh, well, what about lifetime? We've got five pointers here, right? The input parameters, which of these can we keep? Which of these do we need to copy if we want to keep them? Which of these do we need to free? And what about the output parameter? Do we need to free that one? So we could make some labels for those too. Now, if we're transferring ownership, trans sounds like a really good word, uh, a really good label to use, but um, what else can we use? What are some other words that go with trans? Well, what came to me was uh, chemistry terms. We got cis, trans, iso. Those are nice short names that make good tags, but if we can come up with some good meanings for what they mean, maybe we can use those. So I went with kind of a chemistry analogy. Um, if we go with the actual Latin meaning of the word, cis means on this side. So we can use that to mean the ownership stays on this side. So um, if the Kali, in this case, the ownership belonged to the caller, when we're done with the function, the ownership still belongs to the caller. So the Kali must not retain a reference. It's only valid during the call. Trans means on the other side. So in this case, ownership stays on the other side. So if it's an input param, the caller is giving ownership to the Kali. If it's an out param, the Kali is giving ownership to the caller. Now, an important point is that ownership doesn't necessarily mean calling delete. It just means that you have some responsibility that you must discharge before the end of your life. You must pass this guy on before you pass on. ISO means the same. So this is a bit of a stretch, but basically ownership stays the same as it was. So whoever owned it before the call owns it after the call. In this case, what we mean is that the Kali may retain a reference, but does not get ownership. So in this case, um, probably the caller, the person giving you the pointer, didn't really own it. And so the Kali, the guy receiving the pointer, he doesn't really own it either. Basically, it's a promise that this object, which may get cleaned up sometime in the future, um, is still, let's see, it's gonna live longer than the caller who's receiving it. So the caller is gonna be dead, long before the object actually goes away, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so if we put those on our, uh, on our API here, what does it tell us? Well, now it's pretty obvious, right? The name, only valid during the call. We need to make a copy if we want to keep it. The big config blob, only valid during the call, make a copy. The observer, whoa, this guy is relatively global to us. So we can hold on to it, but don't delete it. That's good to know. Uh, the widget that's passed back, yes, we're transferring ownership, so we need to do something to free it, perhaps call destroy widget, so we have a nice pair. So now these tags actually can be used in a couple of different places. Obviously, trans and ISO are very useful on the return value. If you got a factory returning, or if you're getting a factory, you probably don't want to delete it. Um, ISO is actually pretty useful on a member variable. If you've got something that you're not supposed to delete, it's helpful to mark it down so you can remind, <laughs> remind yourself and don't accidentally delete it in the destructor. Uh, on the opposite side, you might want to mark something as owned so that you know that you do need to clean it. Now, if you uh, 
don't like curly bra if you don't like macros, you can use <laughs> you can use angle brackets. But the important thing is it helps us know what to do with the lifetime. <laughs>